Have you been pwned with Troy Hunt? All that and more this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. I've always wondered if I got pwned, or maybe it's owned. Well, to teach us whether it's owned or pwned, today we have Troy Hunt. Troy, it's nice to meet you. How are you Thank doing, you man? Thank you very much. Yeah, Thanks I'm so doing much for good. joining us. Thank you. It's so, nice to be here. <laughs> first off, is it pwned or owned? It, you know, it's whatever you want it to be. And I've heard some really, really interesting <laughs> uh, combinations. You know, I heard someone on the news the other day, this is a news agency, say, um, have I been prawned? Prawned? And I thought that was kind of like cool, too. shrimp? Well, yeah, but we call them prawns. But, uh, and in fact, it was an American it's one amazing. that said prawn, too. So prawned. There you go. <laughs> so, Troy Hunt, you created Have I Been Pwned. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. But you've also done a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm sure everybody's very familiar with Have I Been Pwned. But first off, um, how did you get into you know, computer security? Because that's kind of like what Have I Been Pwned is about, in a way. Yeah, right. Well, look, uh, I do a lot of developer training. So cool. I've been doing a lot of uh, writing about security. My background is, a, is as a developer, yeah. and what I kept finding is that software developers, uh, I mean, we know this, right? They don't have a really good grasp on security. So and true! This is why we have things like Have I Been Pwned. So yeah. I spend a lot of time uh, training them. I, I'm an author for Pluralsight. They're an online training organization, so I write a bunch of uh, training material for them. Awesome. And I go to a lot of events and do a lot of workshops and, and talk to a lot of developers and help them figure out how not to be pwned. And you're a developer yourself? Yeah, so my background's uh, development and then eventually architecture because that's what you do when you get better in your career. You, uh, I still don't even know what it is. To it's be okay. I, I came out of restaurant hospitality administration <laughs> and then I started doing a hacker show. So well, there you go. We <laughs> all have these backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> but software architecture, that's, it's not the building, you know, right, building, right. building real things architecture. <laughs> that, makes, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, that's better. So how did you get the idea of haveibeenpwned.com? So I was looking at a bunch of different data breaches. So I would see a data breach happen and yeah. I'd do some, some research and analysis and I'd see these patterns where you keep getting the same people over multiple data breaches. And what's really interesting is when you sort of start to piece together all the attributes and you see the profile that gets built up about someone yeah. because of all these uh, multiple breaches with the same person. But I found it really interesting and I thought, I wonder how aware people are of just how broad their exposure is. So are they aware that they've been in mm. Adobe and Gawker and you know whatever else? So I thought that would actually be a really good project and that would give me a chance to, to build something where people could find this information. And again, I, look, I've got a developer background. Building yeah. stuff is fun, right? <laughs> and building big stuff is really fun. So when I started out, I had, I think, about 155 million accounts. Uh, and when I say accounts, what? they're email addresses. That's I know, a it's, lot. It's, it's a lot. And this is just the stuff that was Jeez. easily obtainable at the time. But that's good because that makes it, well, okay, I shouldn't say good, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's a good, that's good. Mm. It's a good development <laughs> challenge. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I wanted to do a bunch of stuff with Microsoft's uh, Azure cloud services. And it's like, look, if I do it with this, then it's real data and real scale. Yeah. Uh, and now there's about 220 something million accounts in there. 220 million, 385,281. About that, which would be Jeez. about right. And now the site, you know, at really, really crazy times, there's millions of people a day that come and search on it. And yeah, it's just, just, just gone nuts. So when somebody searches on here, so I actually went to this website once and right. my friend comes up behind me and he goes, that's awesome, a site that's harvesting tons of email. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, no, I sure mm. hope not. So <laughs> harvesting? No. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> so it, look, this comes up a lot, and I'm always kind of amused about it because I'm going, so you've come to my site and you've given me one email address w yeah. with full consciousness that there's 220 something million there, and you're worried about me taking so your what would be the point? one email address. Look, if, if I wanted to harvest them, and I, I guess if we, we say, why do people harvest email addresses? Well, they want to do things like build spam lists, yeah. for example. I've got 220 million accounts. I would have a very, very good spam list uh, if I wanted you to. You probably would. <laughs> uh, so no, I don't harvest, I don't capture and store them anywhere or anything like that. So you know, you come and you search and, and that's it. I'm not doing anything with okay. the data. So what does happen when somebody puts in their email address there? Right, so what happens is it searches two different resources on the site. So we've got the, the breaches and that's the mm -hmm. 220 million odd accounts. And every one of those is things like Adobe or Ashley Madison where there's been one big incident. Yeah. I've gone and obtained that breach from wherever it was published publicly. They're all things that have been done publicly. Oh yeah. And I will load those into the system and I, I validate it as well. So I make sure that this was actually a valid incident and it wasn't oh, someone just making it up. Okay. 
So there's that, and then there are also the paste. So we have paste bin where a lot of stuff is just dumped randomly. Yeah. We were just looking at some paste before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the weirdest stuff just appears on paste bin. But very often it's a very early indicator of a compromise as well because the attackers will grab a subset of the data, they'll dump it there. Oh, and just to prove that they have it. Yeah, it's like a proof. Yeah. So I go through and I, I pull the data out of there on, on a very, very regular basis. Uh, and in fact, uh, normally it's around about 40 seconds between something appearing in a paste and then being searchable oh. and have it been pwned. So when you search... How do you find it so quick? Um, magic and <laughs> uh, look, I mean, there's it's it's through a combination of, of ways, but basically, yeah. it's uh, it's easy to tell when there is new content on Pastebin, and there are multiple ways of doing that. Looking at yeah. Pastebin, there are Twitter accounts that announce it as well. So oh, I I sort of true. go across all of those and go, what's the fastest I can get it? And then I put those email addresses into the system. So gotcha. when you search, you're actually asynchronously searching across two different sources, and then it will come back and tell you your exposure. Okay. So yeah, th you brought up Ashley Madison actually, and I was thinking like, what if somebody finds their email and they want you to get rid of it, like they want you to delete it off the site? Yeah, well, look, Ashley right Madison is um, like, how does that play into it? I exactly, it's interesting. So Ashley Madison sort of changed the landscape a lot uh, for, for have I been pwned, and I'd say even for data breaches in general, and that this was now like a massively sensitive class of data. Yeah. You know, this is not, uh, if you're in, say, Adobe, people know you like Photoshop, you know, like, who really cares? Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you're in Ashley Madison and they either know or they assume that you're cheating on your wife, like mm -hmm. this is a different scenario. And it was always cheating on the wife, because almost all guys on there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry, dudes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, guys and fembots as well, but I don't think anyone really fembots. cares about oh, fembots. Interesting. So this is the thing. Like it, it, it is, <laughs> it is a sensitive piece of data, and what I decided to do with Ashley Madison is not make it searchable uh, via the general public. Insofar as I can't go and search for you, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't go and search for your significant other or, or anything like that. So in, in terms of protecting identities, I wanted to make sure that when you search for yourself, you have to get an email back to your address and show that you've received it, and then you can see whether oh, you're in there. Okay, so you're verifi verifying the actual email address. We're verifying the email address. That's good. So that's, uh, I, look, that was the right thing to do. And it, I, I think it was, because if, if you ended up like deleting, start, starting to delete emails off of an entire you know, paste on the website, then you'd have half of the data that you should actually have on there. It, it gets really tricky. So I, I sort of thought, look, the thing to do is to err on the side of caution and go, look, this is sensitive data. Let's yeah. just go, all right, you're only going to be able to see it yourself. And it, interestingly, uh, after that breach happened, there were a lot of sites that popped up and just made it all publicly searchable. Not just were you in there, were you not, but yeah. here is all the data. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is what you said about yourself, what kind of lingerie you liked. You know, this is all publicly so searchable. Creepy. It, it, is, it, it is creepy, but the really creepy thing is hearing the stories about who was searching for it. So, you know, you would have things like community members going yeah. and searching for everyone in their postcode and then putting a list on a bulletin board. It's, it's, it's like you could imagine in the 15th century, like, nailing it up on the church door oh, yeah, or something. Oh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, the witch trials. <laughs> it is, it is. It's like that. And so this is what people have been doing. And, and the interesting thing is a lot of those have had some form of legal action against them as well. Mm -hmm. So they've either had DMCA takedowns which are a bit questionable, but be that as it may, they've had that from Avid Life Media, who owns Ashley Madison, uh, or they've, uh, looks like there's some other legal proceedings as well against sites that were distributing this information wow. to the public. So with the benefit of hindsight, and, and there was some foresight as well, I think it was a good idea not making that available to everyone. <laughs> I think that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually tried out your site on a few different email addresses. Luckily, my main one has not been pwned. <laughs> And this one showed up in a couple of different places. So I, I like how you set it up, though. You tell us like the date, the email addresses yeah. that are available in the pastebin. And then we can actually see the pastebin over on the pastebin site. So. Yeah, if they haven't deleted too it. Too late to expect us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ranting and raving on Pastebin, isn't there? It's there a funny thing. There's a lot of angry people on Pastebin. <laughs> yeah, there's, why are well, you guys so angry? You have a bunch of email addresses. It's Just because they're fine. pubescent, that's why. <laughs> oh, not all of them, I hope. Gosh. No, there's like this one guy who wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, everyone else. It's, look, it's a lot of kids. It is. Yeah. So where do you see this, this site going from here? Because you well, are a developer, so are you planning to implement new stuff? Yeah, so there's going in a couple of directions. I mean, what's there and people use freely, that, you know, that'll keep going. Yeah. Uh, there's now sort of a commercial side of it that I'm, I'm working with various companies with in order for them to get intelligence, um, mostly about their customers. Cool. <coughs> 
So particularly things like identity theft services, where they're trying to build a, a very broad profile of the risk of their user base, and they're looking at things like, you know, are there credit inquiries and so on yeah. for the customer. But they see a, an upside for being able to say, well, has my customer been exposed in data breach or are they appearing in lots of pace? Yeah. And, and this effectively white labels the service so they can get notifications when their customers are impacted. So I'm doing some good things there. There's, there's some organizations using that with, with many tens of millions of, of customers they monitor. And that's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of cool too. And the site's totally free to use. So yeah. can people, people can donate to you, I assume? Yes, yes feel, feel free to donate. Yeah. There's uh, yeah, Bitcoins or PayPal's. Uh, and there's an API as well, as a free API, so if anyone nice. wants to build on top of it and you want to sort of integrate it into your system and, and do whatever awesome things you can come up with. Cool, cool. All right, well, where can people find you if they have any other questions? I am uh, at Troy Hunt on Twitter and I am TroyHunt.com as well. Awesome. And everything leads in from there. Thanks so much and I'm going to check all of my coworkers' email addresses now <laughs> and see if they got phoned. <laughs> Domain.com and .club came to Hack5 with a great idea. Build a club all about learning stuff, making things, and having fun. So we've been hosting open houses at the Hack5 warehouse through hackhouse.club. And with the help of domain.com and .club, we've taken it to the next level with the quadcopter arena of doom. From LAN parties, drone racing, and battle arenas, to 3D printing, software-defined radios, and let's not forget barbecue, hacking is just plain better when it's social. Dot Club gets it, and they are the perfect social domain. Whether it's IRC or clubs in RL, it's all about coming together and having fun. So what better domain to do it than a dot club? It's perfect because a dot club is universally and globally understood. So if you're looking for the ultimate social domain, consider a dot club. So join us this summer in the San Francisco Bay Area and bring your mini quadcopter to the arena for DroneBattle.club. We're setting up the leaderboard, so show us what you've got. And what's your dot club? Let us know and we'll share it with the Hack5 audience and help spread the word. Get yours over at domain.com slash club. They're only $9.99 a year and there are thousands of great domains available. And be sure to use the coupon code HAK5 to get 15% off and let them know we sent you. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack5, but before we get going, I do want to tell you about some uh, ways that you can get in on the Hack5 fun goodness. Sign up for all the things! So first off, we have Pentest with Hack5 or Pentest with Hack5 dot Com. And you, that's where you can find out all the different dates of all the different classes that we will be uh, training. We had so much fun in the last one. Yeah. I hope to see you at one soon. Also, we have open houses that we are doing, and you can sign up for those over at hakhouse.club. And that's how you can come all over to the warehouse and get some barbecue on. And it's, and it's just lots of fun. Quadcopter death matches of doom. Um, and the last one is camp503.com. Yes, Camp 503 as in service not available because there won't be any. So don't bother bringing your cell phones. Just bring your human spirit, some face paint, and good times face had by all. Uh, you can find all, all the weird details about why we're not announcing dates over at camp503.com. Hmm, mm -hmm. sounds interesting. Yes. Of course, don't forget to send us all your emails and everything else in that Forward matter. Forward everything in your inbox right now to feedback at hack5.org. Don't do that. We appreciate it. We read them all. We really don't want to read all no, those No, we don't. Set your reply to header <laughs> to feedback. I'm sorry. Email is so boned. Dude, I can't believe we still use this. Anyway, or you can comment below and we'll say hi to you. Uh, thank you for your community support. Hack shop. Hack shop. H A K shop dot com is where you can support us directly. Find all sorts of cool stuff like the land turtle and the USB rubber ducky, Wi Fi pineapple, and goodness like that. And there's some software defined radios. Anyway, lots of fun, happy things happening. Uh, so hit us up on the tweets. You can find that over at uh, hack 5org slash follow. Yep. You can tweet Shannon on the Facebook yep. and on the Instagram and on the Twitter tweets. All the things. Yes. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I am at Snubs. <laughs> Trust your techno lust. Are you good? Good. You good, good? Super good. Are you super good? Super awesome good. Are you super awesome good? Awesomer. Are you awesomer? Awesome mess. Are you awesome mess? Infinity. Are you infinity? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>